The unboxing part of this video is pretty straightforward. Sony doesn't really provide a lot in the box. You get a couple of leaflets and that's pretty much it. The way Sony phones are built, it negates the necessity for even a SIM ejector tool. So this is the Xperia 5 Mark IV and in today's video let's see what Sony offers with it and also if some glaring issues from the Xperia 1 Mark IV, let's see if they've been addressed this time around. Hey my name's Ash, you're watching C4 e Tech, and let's get started. Now there are a lot of things that the Xperia 5 Mark IV shares in common with its more expensive stablemate, the Xperia 1 Mark IV. For example, it sports the same build and design, it's powered by the same chipset and even shares 3 out of 4 of the cameras on board. Now that said, there are three major differences here. Number one is the price. While the 1 Mark IV sold for a ridiculous 1600 US dollars, the 5 Mark IV is priced a little more reasonably, 600 dollars cheaper. Now calling that reasonable is a bit of a stretch, yes, but hey, at least relatively, it is a little more reasonable. What hasn't changed though is availability. Access to Sony phones still remain limited to certain markets and if you happen to live in one of the many countries where you don't have direct access to Sony phones but still like them enough and want to import them, do check out video sponsor 28 Mobile. I've been dealing with 28mobile.com for a long time now. They are quick to ship, very reliable and offer professional support. So not just the Xperia 5 Mark IV, if there's any phone you want that's not really available in your market, do check out 28mobile.com, I'll leave a link in the description below. Now coming back to the Xperia, like I said earlier, 3 out of the 4 cameras they remain unchanged. The one that has changed is the secondary telephoto. On the 1 Mark IV, we got a unique telephoto setup with a variable focal length. With that phone, we were able to switch from 3.5x to 5.2x optically, as in not a jump, but a smooth switch from 3.5 all the way to 5.2. With the Xperia 5 Mark IV, we instead get a more typical 2.5x telephoto option. While it's not unique, it still performs well. This lens is also optically stabilized. And as you can see, the images, they appear well detailed and the color is rich. It's a solid flagship telephoto camera. BD up just like the other three sensors, this one also happens to be 12 megapixels. Now the third and final change is with the display. It's smaller than the one on the Xperia 1 Mark IV. We get 6.1 inches on this guy instead of 6.5, though the aspect ratio remains unchanged at 21 by 9 as it has for a few generations now. The resolution is also lower at Full HD Plus instead of almost 4K. Now this, I don't really mind. Now the Xperia 1 Mark IV's 4K screen, in my humble opinion, it's kind of overrated. Because outside of a few select scenarios like with video playback, it almost always is rendering output in Full HD Plus and then upscaling it. The change in display size, that though is noteworthy because it makes the Xperia 5 Mark IV a lot smaller overall. While the thickness remains unchanged at 8.2mm, the Xperia 5 Mark IV is 9mm shorter and 4mm narrower, making it very compact and super comfortable to hold in hand. Now guys, when you hold a phone in hand, it's the width that plays a major role with respect to how comfortable it is, how comfortable the experience is. And this Xperia 5 is one of the narrowest phones around. Now, let me blow your mind. This phone with its 6.1 inch display, it's narrower than the 4.7 inch display during iPhone SE. And on the Android side of things, the 5.9 inch Zenfone 9, which happens to be the most compact Android powerhouse out today. The only phone, in fact, that I can think of which has a narrower overall build would be the iPhone 13 mini. Now, that said, the, the 5 Mark IV, it's still a pretty tall phone, so reaching all four corners of this display is gonna involve a lot of maneuvering around. But with Android these days, you don't actually have to reach all four corners a lot. So I really did find this phone quite comfortable to hold and use. Everything else remains pretty much the same as with the 1 Mark IV. We still get Gorilla Glass Victus to both the front and back. The battery capacity remains unchanged at 5000mAh, which given the lower resolutions and smaller screen might just mean better battery life. The charging tech, again unchanged, 30 watts power delivery, and this time, in fact, unlike with the other Xperia 5s before this, the Mark IV actually gets wireless charging support. Now on the inside, Still the same, we get Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 which is paired with 128 or 256 gigs of UFS 3.1 storage and 8 gigs of LPDDR5 RAM which could technically be seen as another difference since the Xperia 1, uh, it does support 12 gigs of the same RAM though but you know that's pretty theoretical, practically the RAM, the extra 4 gigs of RAM isn't gonna make any difference. 
For software, Sony continues to not really mess around with much. Outside of one or two apps like LinkedIn or Netflix, there are no other pre-installed third-party apps. They've left a lot stock. That said, in the limited time I've spent with the 5 Mark IV so far, the same issues that I found with the 1 Mark IV, unfortunately, they still seem to persist. The Xperia 1 Mark IV is prone to getting warm and when it does, it locks the phone down to 60 Hz. It doesn't have to be just with intense tasks like gaming, which it actually handles quite capably. I did spend some time playing Diablo Immortal on it and the experience was nice. But even with some lesser intense tasks like say watching a video while a bunch of apps update in the background or say you're charging the phone, Whenever there is some heat being generated, it automatically locks you to 60 Hz. It's pretty annoying, you can't change that behavior and it usually takes a few minutes for it to cool down and go back to 120 Hz. And that exact thing still happens. As I was installing my apps and setting up this phone, like clockwork, the high refresh option got grayed out. I've mentioned this in the past, this is not a result of the phone overheating since none of the Sony phones actually overheat. It just has more to do with Sony having a very low limit as to what's acceptable with respect to thermals. Just to give you a rough idea, usually when a phone hits about the 45 degree mark externally is when throttling sets in and only if that situation continues on for a while do brands start shutting down features. Sony on the other hand plays it very safe to the point where at about 40 degrees they start to turn off features like 120 Hz. It's not a hardware flaw and hence technically should be easily fixable with a software update. But given this is a choice from Sony and they've not hit that fix for many, many years now, I'm not gonna hold my breath on that. Anyways, that's pretty much it for this quick little unboxing and hands-on with Sony's Xperia 5 Mark IV. Like I mentioned earlier, if you do wanna pick this one up, check out 28mobile.com, the link will be in the description below. And while you're down there, give this video a thumbs up or a thumbs down based on whatever you felt about it. If you have any questions you'd like for me to address in the full review, leave them in the comment section below. Also subscribe if you haven't yet and if you are a returning subscriber, hit that bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the kind of content I post. So thanks for your time, thanks for watching. Until next time, my name's Ash, you've been watching C4E Tech, and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day, bye-bye.